in this video something about the term load in electronics. So especially the properties from loads. A load is always connected to a voltage or current source that could be DC but could also be AC. And it's very interesting to know and see what happens when we connect to a DC source with a certain voltage and current. These basic electronic elements, the resistor, the coil, the capacitor and the lamp. Here you see them in real. Big capacitor, electrolytic, a non-electrolytic capacitor, two coils, one with a heavy laminated iron core, one with a ferrite core and resistors. All these electronic components act different on DC and on AC. And AC we can say is also a kind of DC but only for a very short moment and the time uh, is decisive for the properties. So with AC we have a certain frequency. The voltage goes up to a certain level, then goes down to a certain level, goes through the zero and then goes up again. And that is, uh, has all to do with a certain frequency from the AC, from the, the wave that we put in into a load these loads. And the first very important thing to tell is that on DC these loads act completely different compared to AC. So when you have a signal generator from whatever kind with frequencies between say 10 Hz and 200 MHz, these loads, the resistor, the coil, the cap and the lamp um, act different, but I have to tell that the resistor and the lamp also on AC act the same as on DC. Well, I want to explain that later. So what happens when we add DC to a resistor, a coil, a cap or a lamp? Well, here nothing happens. When you connect DC, a current starts to flow and the whole uh, thing obeys to Ohm's law. Also here, the resistance from the coil uh, obeys in a certain way to Ohm's law, but there is an important uh, thing to tell. When we add voltage and current to a coil, there is a magnetic field here that breaks, tries to break the current. So there is a, an other um, power that wants to break, like in a car, the current. When we add DC to a capacitor, the capacitor is charged to a certain value. When we add DC to a lamp, uh, there's only one phenomenon, and that is that the lamp starts to light up, the filament gets hot and the resistance from the filament changes because it gets hot. So it is a higher resistance when a lamp gets hot, the filament has a higher resistance, so the current will diminish. All to Ohm's law. What happens when we connect uh, an AC source to all these sources? Of course, never connect AC to an electrolytic cap. It can explode. We can uh, add AC to a transformer, to a lamp, to this coil, etc., etc. Also to bipolar coils, no problem. And uh, we now see that all these three lo or four loads don't act any longer in an Ohm's way. But, again, the Ohm's kinds of resistances, I have to correct myself, still act in an Ohm's way. 
So here the current and the voltage uh, follow each other exactly when the resistor is purely ohms on AC. Oh sorry, I'm here. Uh, sorry for that. AC source, the, when there is a resistor here and we have AC, the current and the voltage follow each other exactly. And also with a lamp, but we have of course the resistive issue. The filament has a higher resistance anyway. But with these two other electronic loads, it's completely different. The resistance from a coil is related to the frequency that's put in. That has all to do with the properties from the coil. The voltage goes up and down, but uh, in the coil there is an electromagnetic field buildup, and when the, the AC changes its polarity, the field in the coil also has to change, and that means that the the backward current, or say the backward energy, I, I hope it's the right word, breaks the current through the coil. And so, for instance, when we send here in 50 Hz, there is a constant changing electromagnetic field in the transformer that tries to uh, uh, break the input current on the primary. And here we don't have that problem, and also with resistors we don't have that problem, but with capacitors we have another problem. So, uh, capacitors have a capacitive resistance, and this is the formula, and you can see that there is a relation to the frequency. So a capacitor on AC has a certain resistance, but that resistance changes substantially when you change the frequency from the generator and the frequency that goes through that cap. Very important. A coil also has an AC resistance, but that AC resistance is also related to the frequency. That's the inductive resistance here, and this is the formula. And you can calculate it. This is my Dutch book. The AC resistance from a cap and here the AC resistance from a coil. So that's important to tell. And in fact that was all to tell. And of course when you have a generator here it also has a kind of impedance. So all these things are more or less theoretical. In practice you can have a, a, an AC generator, could be an oscillator or whatever, or even an audio amplifier, and you connect a filter inside here, and then you take the audio signal out. All these phenomena play a role, capacitive resistance, inductive resistance, but the whole filter calculation is another issue. So, I hope this was a little bit informative. Um, you can meet all kinds of problems and issues when you want to um, switch on, for instance, um, a load, one of these loads, to a DC or AC voltage source. You have to count with the effects from these uh, sources the effect on the current and the frequency, not on the frequency, but the effect from the frequency on the current, etc. I don't want to go in detail, but anyway, I hope it is a little bit informative. And here all these beautiful components.